Hi everybody, this is John Jamison. I'm the best-selling author of my first book, The Perpetual Wealth System, and my most recent book, Wealth Without Stocks or Mutual Funds. I'm really excited you could join me today on this quick training. Today, folks, I want to talk about self-directed IRAs. Self-directed IRAs is something that almost nobody talks about throughout the country because so few people really understand them. So what is a self-directed IRA? If you call your traditional financial advisor and you say, hey, is my IRA self-directed? They're going to say yes because you have the right to buy all kinds of different stocks or mutual funds or other market-driven vehicles with inside that IRA. So let's just say for the sake of example, you have your IRA at Fidelity. Fidelity is a great company and they're going to tell you it's a self-directed IRA. What it really is is a multiple choice IRA. In other words, you can basically own the same asset class in, this, in that IRA and own all kinds of different stocks and bonds mutual funds, but at the end of the day, they're all stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. When you ask them, hey, I'd like to buy some investment property with my IRA, they will look at you like you've got three heads. It's a, re it's a real simple reason. They're not trained on it. It's not in their interest to be trained on it because once you understand what a self-directed IRA is and you choose to take advantage of it, you're going to be rolling money out of that, uh, that account, which is you know, never in the best interest of the financial advisor. But I don't, deliberately, I don't think they're deliberately hiding anything from you. They just don't understand it. So what is it? All right, let's talk about a self-directed IRA. If your IRA is with a plan administrator that is approved from the government to allow you to do all kinds of different things with that money, you could do flipping real estate inside of it. You could buy income property inside of it. You could make private loans and get great returns, great safe returns on your money inside the IRA. You could own business interests, private business interests, all kinds of different things. Now, of course, there's some rules and regulations we're not going to get bogged down in the weeds here today. I want to give you the 10,000 foot overview. And of course, if you have an interest in doing something more, you can reach out to us directly. So let's take an example. I have got a lot of clients in the real estate part of our practice. And they buy solid income producing real estate in the cash flow capital of the country, which has happened to be where I live and where I've been doing business now for 25 years. And it's Metro Detroit, more specifically the suburbs of Detroit. Now. Right now, you can go out and you can buy a solid three-bedroom, one bath with a basement and or a garage that produces really nice income. It's in a solid working blue class area with good school systems, good sports and recs, parks, all that. You can buy one of those all in, which means purchase price, fees, rehab, everything, somewhere between sixty dollars and $65,000. You can also spend more for a little bigger home, maybe a little bit nicer area. But starting $60,000, $65,000. So let's just say you wanted to buy one of those. Got a client this particular week who called into our office. He heard about the properties we have that we have got available here. And he said, boy, I'd really like to take advantage of that, but I don't have enough money. And he started to tell me, you know, what he has. And he's got $100,000 in an IRA. But he had no idea he could use it to actually buy this real estate. So let's just say he rolls over his $100,000 to a company that handles self-directed IRAs. That's not my company. We don't do those. What we do is work with some people after they have them set up with an approved company and we will help them invest those funds into different projects if they choose to. Alright, so for the sake of example, let's say he's going to buy one of those $60,000 houses. The IRA is going to actually own it for the client's best interest. So the IRA actually owns it. And let's just say they spend $60,000 out of the IRA. Now the IRA owns the property free and clear. And let's say this property rents for $875 a month that goes back to the IRA owner. To the IRA and you're the IRA owner. Okay? So do you get to keep all that $875? The answer is no. You got property taxes, you've got insurance, you've got some deferred maintenance property management because you don't live here and even if you did you want someone to professionally manage it so you can focus your time on other efforts let people do what they're good at after you pay all that guys let's just say for the sake of example there's five hundred dollars a month left so the five hundred net is going to go over to the IRA and that's six thousand dollars a year okay so you invested sixty thousand dollars that first year, you produced a $6,000 
profit, that's a 10% rate of return. That's not too bad. All right. So let's say you continue to do this. And let's say this house, and you hold on to it for seven years. And seven years, let's say there's some appreciation. Now, real quick about this particular house, there was one time uh, before the market collapsed about seven, eight years ago, this house would have been $120,000 to $140,000. I don't know that it's going to get back there. Nobody does, but it's nice to know that it has been there. So let's just say you hold on to this property seven years. You make great income from it. For the sake of example, you're going to net $6,000 a year. Now, truthfully, let's talk realistic. You're not going to net the $6,000 a year. Some years it'll be more, and some years it's going to be less. It's just the nature of the beast. And if that bothers you, this isn't something you should be doing. But for the right investor who understands that they can make great money, there's also a chance that some years they're going to have a couple struggles. But over the long haul, they're going to do really well. So for our example, over seven years, you made $6,000 a year on average. So times seven years equals $42,000. And for our example, we didn't do anything with the $42,000 except let it sit in the IRA. Now, realistically, if you understand volume and velocity of money, which I talked about in other videos, you're not going to let that $42,000 sit there. You're going to let it grow and do other things with it. But for this example, you let it sit there. It's seven years later. You've invested sixty. dollars You got $42,000 back on the sixty, dollars and you still own the asset. So let's say for the sake of example, we had some appreciation and you sold it for $100,000, all right? And let's just say for the sake of example, you netted $100,000. You really won't. You're going to pay expenses and probably a commission. And, but for the sake of example, maybe you sold it for $107,000 and you netted $100,000. So now the $100,000 goes into the IRA. Well, here's the neat thing, folks. Because the IRA owned this investment, that $42,000 is tax-free or tax deferred, I'm, let's assume this is a traditional IRA you rolled over, that's going to be all tax deferred money until you start taking it out. The $100,000 is also tax deferred. So wait a minute, seven years into this, we bought, we used $60,000 out of our IRA, we now have $142,000 back into the IRA, seven years later, and there's no tax due on the profits. How neat is that? Folks, even if it, you didn't get $42,000 and you, the rent struggled a little bit more and you only got $30,000 but, and you sold it for $80,000, guys, whatever you make above and beyond that $60,000 is profit and tax-deferred profit. So, guys, if you add up the rate of return on that, it's going to be far superior to just owning stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. But there is a level of knowledge that you need to have to be able to participate in that. That's what we're here for. That's why I'm teaching you these things. What else could you do with that money? You could make private loans with that money. Um, there's some rules and regulations you have to make sure you're doing it right, but you can make private loans, maybe charge two points up front and 12% interest. Do that over a period of 5, 10, 15, 20 years. What could you do with this money? Could you take the $142,000 now and make a down payment on a more expensive property, get some private financing, uh, non-recourse money to finance the next property? Maybe you've got a 10-plex that your IRA owns. All kinds of things. You can own mobile home parks. You can own all kinds of things with a self-directed IRA. It's pretty neat stuff, and you will not find this from a traditional financial advisor. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to encourage you. If you have, we have a whole chapter in this on my book, by the way, Wealth Without Stocks or Mutual Funds. Make sure you buy the second one, not the first one. The second one's the most updated. It has a whole chapter on this. It has a whole chapter on private lending. Loaded with fantastic information. You'll see all the reviews. I'm very proud of it. But this is the potential that a self-directed IRA has. Now, by the way, if this was a Roth IRA, that money is never taxable. Because remember, you pay tax on the money going into the Roth, but when you take it out, it's tax-free. Now, you could also flip. For the sake of example, let's say you find something locally to you, and you fix it up and you sell it, and your, your IRA did it with your IRA money, and you sold it and you made $30,000. Folks, that $30,000, if you did that in, the, in one year with your, in a normal account, you're going to owe roughly $10,000 of tax on the $30,000 profit. You get to keep 20. If your IRA owns it, well, guess what, guys? It's all tax deferred. So for many, many years, you get to keep it. Or if it's a Roth, you get to keep it forever. So I think I've spoken long enough about this. I just wanted to give you some ideas. Uh, reach out to us directly or email us. Go to our website. Certainly buy the book. Uh, by the way, the book has a $1,000 bonus with it 
which means uh, I'm going to give you a whole home study course of how to be your own bank, private financing, how to use uh, life insurance to grow and protect wealth. It's a thousand dollar package I've sold on the stage for that kind of money. You get it for free when you invest in the book, which is a whopping roughly 20 bucks. So again, this is John Jamison. I'm the best-selling author of Wealth Without Stocks and Mutual Funds. Thanks for stopping by today. We'll see you in another video. Check us out on some more videos we have. Bye-bye now.